welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be looking at the whole topic of systematic organic chemistry. Please go to the link in the description box below to download the accompanying worksheet from my website that you can work through as you watch this video. Let's start by looking at some definitions. A hydrocarbon is a compound which contains only carbon and hydrogen. A homologous series is a family of compounds which have the same general formula and similar chemical properties. There are often trends in their physical properties, such as melting and boiling points. Intermolecular forces are the forces between molecules. These are broken during melting and boiling. A saturated hydrocarbon contains only carbon-to-carbon -carbon single bonds, whereas an unsaturated hydrocarbon contains at least one carbon-to-carbon -carbon double or triple bond. An addition reaction is a reaction in which a small molecule adds across a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. Isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula, but different structural formula. General formula is used to describe homologous series. It can be used to find the molecular formula of any member of a homologous series. When naming hydrocarbons, we use prefixes to describe how many carbons there are. For one carbon, we use the prefix meth. For two, eth. For three, prope. For four, but. For five, pent. For six, hex. For 7, hept, and for 8, oct. You only need to know up to 8 carbons. In this video, we're going to focus on three homologous series. First, we're looking at the alkanes, which have the suffix A, N, E in their names. The functional group is the carbon to carbon single bond, which is shown as C single bond C. We then have the alkenes, which have the suffix E, N, E in their name. Their functional group is the carbon to carbon double bond. This is shown as a carbon double bond to a carbon. And finally, the cycloalkanes. They have the prefix cyclo and then the suffix ane in their name. Their functional group is a ring of carbons which are joined with single bonds. The first family we're looking at are the alkanes. They are homologous series of saturated hydrocarbons. They're commonly used as fuels and are insoluble in water. They have a general formula CnH2n plus 2. This means that for every carbon there are 2 plus 2 hydrogens. We can see this here with propane, which has the molecular formula C3H8. Pause the video now and use the general formula to complete these alkane molecular formulae. The next family we are looking at are the alkenes. They are homologous series of unsaturated hydrocarbons. They are commonly used as fuels and to make polymers and alcohols. They are also insoluble in water. They have a general formula CnH2n. This means that for every carbon there are two hydrogens, such as in propene C3H6. Pause the video now and use the general formula to complete these alkene molecular formulae. The last family are the cycloalkanes. They are homologous series of saturated cyclic hydrocarbons. They are commonly used as fuels and solvents and are insoluble in water. They also have the general formula CnH2n. Here we can see cyclopropane with the formula C3H6. The carbons are joined in a ring. Pause the video now and use this general formula to complete the cycloalkane molecular formulae. Isomers are compounds which have the same molecular formula, but different structural formulae. They can be in the same or different homologous series. Here we have butene with the double bond between the first two carbons. To make the first isomer, we can simply move the double bond to be between the second and third carbon. To make another isomer, we can take the original structure of butene, take off the end carbon and create a methyl branch on the middle carbon. For larger structures, this can be repeated multiple times. We can also have another isomer for butene, which is in a different homologous series, in this case in the cycloalkanes. So here we have cyclobutane. This has the same number of carbons and hydrogens, 
C4H8, but they are arranged in a ring structure. We can also draw isomers from molecular formulae. Here we have C5H12. The simplest place to start is to draw the straight chain version of whatever the molecular formula is. In this case, this is pentane. So we have five carbons in a row surrounded by 12 hydrogens. We can then shorten the chain by one to make it four carbons and move one of the groups into the second carbon to create a methyl group. We can then do this a second time by taking off the other end carbon and putting this into the middle to create a, a long chain of three with two methyl groups coming off of the centre carbon. Pause the video now and draw all the possible isomers for each example. When naming branch chain alkanes, we follow specific rules. The first rule is to find the longest chain of carbons. We find this longest chain and give this the name. This will be the base of the name. In this case, we have eight carbons, so the base of the name is going to be octane. Once you've found the longest chain, you need to number it from the end closest to one of the branches. In this case, we'll be numbering from the left, but take care because sometimes it can be from the right. Once you have done your numbering, you need to identify your branches. Here we have a branch which contains two carbons. This will be called ethyl. Here we have a branch which contains one carbon. This will be called methyl. We have two of these branches, which means we need to use the prefix di when we're creating the name. We name the branches alphabetically, so for this the ethyl will come first. We need to have a number for each of the branches. So here we have three ethyl, 5,5-dimethyl, five, five, a number for each of the methyl groups. When you are drawing a branch chain alkane, it is best to start from the base of the name and draw out the longest chain of carbons. In this case, we have eight carbons for octane. You then need to number these carbons. I would just number from left to right. We need to identify where the branches would be and how many carbons are in each branch. On the third carbon, we have a branch with two carbons in it, an ethyl branch. On the second carbon, we have two methyls, and on the fourth carbon, we also have a methyl group. Once you have drawn in all of your branches, you then need to add in hydrogens so that each of the carbons have four bonds. Pause the video now and name and draw these molecules. The rules for naming branch chain alkenes are similar, however we have an extra rule because of the double bond. We first need to identify the longest chain of carbons which contains the double bond. In this case we have six which would be hexene, but we're leaving a gap between the hex and the ene. We then want to number the chain from the end closest to the double bond and insert the number from the start of the double bond into the name. In this case the double bond is between two and three, so we insert the number two. 
We then need to identify the branches as we did before. Here we've got a one carbon branch, which is methyl. We add this onto the start of the name with the appropriate number, in this case 5-methyl. When we're drawing branch chain alkenes, we follow similar steps. First draw out the longest chain of carbons and number these from left to right. Insert the double bond using the number from the name to help you. Here it is between carbons 2 and 3. Add on where the branches would be and work out how many carbons are in the branches. Here we have two branches, both methyl. You then need to add in hydrogen atoms so that each carbon has four bonds. Take care around the double bond as we do not need as many hydrogens here. Pause the video now and name and draw these molecules. When naming cycloalkanes, simply count the number of carbons that are in the structure and name it as you would an alkane, then put the prefix cyclo in front. Here we have four carbons, so this is cyclobutane. When drawing a cycloalkane, find how many carbons you have, draw them in a ring and join them together. Each of the carbons will have two hydrogens, so add these in. Pause the video now and name and draw these molecules. Unsaturated compounds such as alkenes can undergo addition reactions. The test for unsaturation is the bromine test. Bromine water is added to the substance. Because bromine is brown due to the BrBr bond, when this is broken the solution decolorises. This can happen when the bromine adds across a double bond. Unsaturated compounds will decolorise bromine water quickly, whereas saturated compounds will not. Addition of bromine or any other halogen in this way will produce a dihaloalkane. Alkenes can also undergo other addition reactions. Addition of hydrogen is called hydrogenation. When we add hydrogen to an alkene, we produce the corresponding alkane. Hydration is the addition of water to produce alcohols. If the alkene is asymmetrical, then two products are formed. This is shown here. When the water splits up into an H and an OH, there are two options for where each of these can go. This can produce an alcohol with either the OH on the end or on the middle carbon in this case. Pause the video now and identify the missing reagent in each reaction. Thank you for watching my video, I hope that you found it helpful. Please remember to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of new videos. You can also follow me on Twitter at Miss Adams Chem and Instagram Miss Adams Chemistry for updates on new videos and flashcards throughout the year. Bye for now!